Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Cap at Home and Gold Detroit. My name is Miss Allie and thank you for joining me again this fine Tuesday afternoon. Today we are going to be making these really fun scribble art pieces. They are fabulous, so fun, and really easy to make with just a few simple steps and materials. And they're really cool because they're abstract and you can move them and position them and show them any which way that you want. They're very fun, very easy, good for everyone, the whole family to do. So I'm going to switch over to my drawing board so we can get started on the super fun art project this week. So as I get set up with my drawing board, I wanted to um, give a special thanks and shout out to a few people. Of course, um, uh, Gold Detroit, as well as the College for Creative Studies and General Motors and the um, uh, Community Education Commission of Detroit who allow us to keep me having these free art tutorials every week. So, thank you for joining me again. My name is Miss Allie, and we are going to get started on making these super fun scribble abstract art pieces. And abstract art refers to art that doesn't look like something specific. So, something like this, where we're not looking at something specific like a human or um, an animal. This is just abstract. Focuses a lot on shape, colors, and lines. And that is what we were going to do today. And that's kind of the cool thing about abstract art. If you could see, I keep turning my page because it kind of looks good any which way you have it. So to make this, we are going to need a few things. We are going to need a piece of white paper, piece of black paper. If you only have white or black paper, that's okay. Um, you can do this project even with just those colors. We are also going to need some scissors, a glue stick, and some coloring utensils. I have some markers here, but colored pencils, crayons, even paint will do just fine. And for our finishing details, um, if you're also interested in having um, a white pencil or something to add some details, um, or even glitter or sequins can work good as well. So the first thing we are going to start off with, I'm going to set this stuff aside, is I'm going to start off with my white piece of paper. Now you can hold it if you feel more comfortable doing it horizontal or vertical, any way is fine. Um, I'm going to start with this and we're going to start with a marker or pencil or pen, um, whatever you have. I have a black one. I always start with black because I think that's easiest. And I am going to make a big scribble. Now, Sometimes I have a hard time making a scribble when I'm looking at the page, so what I actually like to do is close my eyes and make my scribble. So that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to close my eyes and just sort of make a scribble-esque. And I like to sort of connect the two ends. And I got a pretty funky circle here. And if you decide you want to like go over some of it, if you're like, oh, I think that could be darker... In some areas, you can like re-outline it if you choose to. I might do so in a few areas. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So we basically just created a bunch of mini sections to draw inside. And again, I like to close my eyes doing it. I think it's more fun that way. If you are doing that, then I recommend um, having something underneath your drawing surface so you know you won't get it on the table. So you can out, re-outline it if you want. When you get it like that, then you are actually going to start coloring in each section. So each one of these sections, um, through your scribble, every time it overlaps, it creates a new section. So this is also a good idea if you ever do, um, like if you're ever testing pens and you kind of scribble them on a page, you could also use papers like that. Um, so when you have your scribble, um, then you can start coloring in, and everywhere it overlaps, it creates a new section. So those sections can be like different colors. If you see in my example, I have some overlap here. So I did some greens and orange and blues. You can choose specific colors you want to use, or you can just say, oh, you know, I like this color. I'm going to just fill it in here. And you can just start filling in. So like I know this is going to be one area here. And I can fill this in. And I have markers with me, but you can also use colored pencils, crayons. Like I said, even if you want to get adventurous and use some paint, that's also cool. 
And you can use just like specific colors. You could make yours all monochromatic, meaning you just use certain colors. So you could do all different kinds of blues or all different kinds of um, pinks. Or maybe you want to do all the warm colors, so orange, red, and yellow. Or maybe you want to do all the cool colors, blue, green, and purple. So when I always, I know some of my colors are going to duplicate, so sometimes I'll fill in like a bunch of the small shapes the same color first. And I try and spread them out so they're not directly next to each other. You know, when you can take your time coloring in this, this is going to probably take the most time to fill in. And take your time and really color in inside the lines, make it even. Um, and you can just, like I said, you can keep turning it too. That's the cool thing. There's no like correct direction it has to go. So I find that when I'm working on these, I end up keep turning my page. As I just did. I always end up turning it. I can all say, okay, I think. And I'm starting to spread out my colors. I like using a bunch of colors, but that's just me. So eventually... Um, you're going to fill in this whole thing. So I'll maybe do another shape or two and then I'll kind of jump ahead. So like I said, this part takes the most amount of time. And you want to make sure they're all colored in evenly. I don't know, like I said, I love using lots of colors. So most of the things I do have multiple colors. So let's say I jump ahead and ta-da, this is one that I started. And let's say, let's pretend I've, I've done my scribble now. I've outlined it again just to make sure I have a good thick black line and I've colored in each section so it's totally full. So now there's a couple um, next steps that we can do. So once you take your time and it's totally colored in, the next thing you want to do is actually cut this out. So this, you know, Move slowly, cut along the lines. You're not in any hurry. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. So you just take your time cutting this out. And that's the cool thing too. So because these are abstract and they started from scribbles, um, every single one of these is going to look totally different. I had three examples of scribbles here. This one, the one I showed you at the beginning of this video, and the one I was just drawing. And all of them look totally different. Um, and so even imagine your whole family making one of these and they're all going to look super different. And that's the really cool thing about this project is we can all use the same. We could all even use the same colors and they would still look super different and cool. Um, and that's kind of the awesome thing about this project is that there's endless ways that they could turn out. So I'm just trying to cut kind of evenly, smoothly. Not trying to rush too much. If you need help cutting, you can always ask an adult or an older sibling. All right, so I have that cut out. I'm going to set my scraps aside so I have my shape. And the next thing I'm going to do is grab my black paper that I showed you that we needed from before. And I'm actually going to glue this on sort of in the center of my paper. So I'm going to take my glue stick add glue on the back of this. Fun tip, if you're running low on glue sticks, I always like getting these nice big ones. These nice big glue sticks. I think they last longer. Um, and Target always has them go on sale right around the end in the beginning of the school year. And um, they're only like a dollar for like a pack of two of them. So totally worth it. Just fun little tips. 
All right, so I've covered it pretty good in glue, and I'm gonna try and make it totally in the center, but if it's not even or straight or anything, that's okay because it's abstract and there's no right or wrong way it can look. And so then I always go around and just make sure I got the corners on really good, any of those edges that I might have missed. And I just sort of make sure it's on really good. Okay. So when it's like this, then there's a couple things we can do. Now, if you notice on this one, you could call this good. You could be done. But I always like to add a little detail. So if you notice on this one, I started to add some details into my colored shapes. Um, I added some, like, small polka dots, some fun lines and dots and whatnot. And that can just sort of make it um, just a little bit more fun. So sometimes what I like to do is just... Start to add some fun like dots or swirls or lines. Something that can just, you know, make it even more cool looking. Because again, abstract art's all about line, shapes, colors. So there's no like right or wrong way this is going to look. So I'm just, I love polka dots. I think of this as like the accessories part. I love me some accessories. And I just add, I don't know, just gives it some flair. Just for fun. You can also, you don't have to do this part if you think, you know, it looks good the way it is. Um, I also... Another thing you can do is also just add, like, glitter or sequins in some of your areas. That could be a really cool um, addition. Totally up to you. And I kind of try and spread them out, too. Like, I might decide... Some of them go over here... Um, yeah, and you can, you know, spread them out the way you want them. All right, I think that's looking pretty fun, pretty cool. So it can be something like that. Yeah, like I said, so it's just sort of like small details, again, just to sort of make it stand out even more. Um, yeah, so you could say, okay, I think that looks good. I like the way it looks. Or, you know, you could keep adding. You could keep looking at it later and say, oh, I think this little spot needs to. I always end up doing that. I, like, think it's good. And then I'm like, oh, no, I think that could use, like, a, I don't know, I could use some polka dots or a big circle or something. I do that a lot. Sometimes I even like to add, like, the darker version of a color over the lighter version. So I was, I'm using purple on purple. So that can be fun. Okay. And you can add just like polka dots or it can be stars or hearts or whatever you want it to be. It's totally your work, whatever you want to do. So whenever you think it looks good and you're like, okay, loving it. I think I just need one more thing. I just felt like I needed something up there. All right, now I think it's excellent. I'm loving it. Another thing you can do is add a few details in the background. Now, again, this could be done, but you could take a white colored pencil, and sometimes what I like to do is just do a few things um, sort of in the corners. And this, I think, just sort of like makes it look like a finished finished artwork here really adds in ties in the rest of the picture
And they can be as detailed or as simple as you want. In this one, I made mine a little bit more simple or a little more complicated. I added a border. And then sometimes you might even feel like, oh, I feel like I could add a few of these fun lines out here. Or maybe you want to even add a few dots out here. The cool thing is white on black obviously makes it contrast. So we're just using simple lines, shapes, dots, and colors to create something cool like this. So nothing too complicated, just sort of fun and silly looking. And when you like how it looks, then you can be all done. I think this will help me just finish it up here. And then you can always add, like, something in the middle. It can be bordered all the way around. Again, you totally don't have to do this. This is just, I like to kind of give it finishing touches. And it kind of helps fill the page, especially if your scribble is more smaller than your page. So then you can decide which way is up or down. Like you, I like this. I think this direction is good. So what I might even do is add my initials at the bottom, call it good, and be ready to hang off and display. So starting from a simple scribble on a white piece of paper, coloring in your shapes, cutting it out, gluing it on a black piece of paper, and adding some details in your shapes and even on the white paper with a white or on the black paper with a white colored pencil to get this really cool abstract scribble artwork. And it looks like a professional abstract artist. So, that is how you make abstract scribble art. Hopefully you enjoy. Come up with your own. I'd love to see what they look like. If you happen to make one and you want to share it, feel free to share it um, in the email provided in the written portion of this video. And thank you again for watching me this week on Cap at Home. My name is Miss Allie, and we are here every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. streaming live. And make sure to join us. If you miss any of our videos, you can catch us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Catch any of our videos. So join me in next Tuesday for another fun video, and um, join us next tomorrow for another awesome Cap at Home video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next week.